Hello. Hands up, children. Who is getting really excited for Christmas? Okay, hands down. Hands up if you've got your Christmas tree up or decorated. Okay, hands up if you've got lights up on the outside of your house. So today we're going to continue our theme of Advent. I bet lots of you this morning opened another window in your Advent calendar. Advent is a really, really exciting time for Christians and for church, and I'm sure it is for you. How many days till Christmas, do you know? If you're watching this assembly on Monday, then it's officially only 18 sleeps till Christmas Day. Wow, and if you're watching this later in the week, it's even less sleeps. I bet you're all excited about what presents you might get. But there are lots of other things to be thankful for, aren't there? So teacher, please can you press pause and we're going to do our normal thank you time. What do you have to be thankful for for this week? Let's share those encouragements with one another. I hope you had lots of nice things to be thankful for. We're now going to watch an animation to remind us of the Christmas story. Mary was really scared when the angel came to her. There was one main angel called Gabriel. He was just a boy angel. She had wings and she was all white. The angel said, you're going to have a special baby. And it was God's son. She was quite excited. A bit scared. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have the son of God. And then she was like, I can't, I'm not married and stuff. Joseph, he was a builder. Mary told Joseph that she was having a baby called Jesus and it was God's son. And he's like, what? Then Joseph saw the angel in a dream. I think Joseph was really scared. And then they went to Bethlehem. On a donkey. It would be quite hot. She had a baby in her tummy and she would have been really heavy. <laughs> she said, Can we stop anywhere with these houses? They had to try and find somewhere for Mary to have the baby. They went around a whole neighbourhood. No, there's no space. Everyone said no in an angry voice because it was the middle of the night. I said no! The last innkeeper, he said, yeah, there's a barn type thing around the back. They had to go to a barn and have their baby. It had sheep. It was like all hay and animal poop and sheep and things. Mary put baby Jesus in one of those troughs. They call the baby Jesus and they loved him. And he has two daddies. God and Jesus, they both needed to look after the baby. The angel told the shepherds to follow the star. There was three kings. They followed the star all the way to where Jesus was born. When they get to the stable, they go them to eat as the presents. And then they got some angels as visitors too. And then there was a giant star. Everyone was there. Then there was a party.
I wonder if you have a crib scene in your home. This is our crib scene and it's very special to us because it was a gift from friends in Africa. For a while we lived in the kingdom of Eswatini in southern Africa. That's why the people in our nativity scene are African. Many children in Eswatini have very, very little, but they have so much joy. I think that's why this crib is so special to both of us and to our family. It's made of leaves from the maize cobs and scraps of what we would call corn on the cob and scraps of rags. It's made from nothing, rubbish really. I think it's so beautiful. Do you want to have a closer look? So let me show you. Here's Mary and Joseph. You've got to check out the donkey and the sheep in a minute. Here's our shepherd. Here's our sheep. And the donkey. <laughs> but there's something missing. But we'll come back to that later. I wonder how many of you have ever held a newborn baby or a very tiny one. Again, let's see, hands up. Have you held a newborn baby? Okay, hands down. Ellie's got our first question for you. So, what does a baby need after it's been born? Okay, let's press pause. And why don't you have a think about that and then you can share with your class. So, did you say milk? Did you say lots and lots of cuddles? Did you say lots and lots of sleep? Did you say lots of nappies? Lots of baby wipes? Lots of teddies? All kinds of things. So, can a baby look after themselves? No. no. Can a baby get themselves dressed or get their own breakfast? No. no. Can a baby change their own nappy or get themselves into bed? No. Babies are amazing, but they can't do much for themselves. A baby is a living miracle. They're so, it's such a beautiful gift, but they're so tiny and so fragile. You don't want to drop a baby and you don't want to squash a baby. When you hold them, you feel so big and they feel so small and fragile. When I first held a newborn baby, I was worried that I'd squash it, so I held it so carefully. Each one of you were tiny little babies, and you made your mums and dads' hearts fill up with so much love and so much joy. Even when you didn't let them have any sleep in the middle of the night, and you screamed so loud that your face went purple, they still loved you so much. Even when you did such big poos that your nappies leaked everywhere. They still loved you. God showed his love for you and for me with a very special gift. And what was that gift? Yes, that's right, a baby. And this baby was going to be even more precious than any other baby because he was God's own son, Jesus. That's who was missing from our crib scene. Do you want to meet our Jesus? Looks a bit like an ice cream cone. It's very cute. <laughs> At Christmas, we believe that God loved us so much that he gave his most precious gift in all the world, his son. And we remember that Jesus went through so much to make sure that we knew, that we know that we are loved. Jesus didn't have life easy. When he was born, there wasn't even anywhere for him to go. Mary and Joseph kept knocking on all the doors in Bethlehem, but at every door all they heard were two words. No room. In the end, the Son of God was born in a cold stable next to the cows and the sheep. Which brings us to our next question. If you were in charge of making a plan for the birth of Jesus, what would be your plan? Teachers, please press pause and let's put together some birthing plans. I wonder what you said. Maybe you said he should be born in Buckingham Palace. 
Maybe he said he should be born in the world's best children's hospital with all the world's best doctors and nurses flown in to be on hand. And what about when he's born? Maybe you said he should be put in a solid gold cot with the world's softest mattress and blankets made from the rarest, softest cashmere. But he wasn't, was he? He wasn't born like the rich and famous. He was born like the poor and lowly. When Jesus was born, it wasn't into comfort. Actually, Jesus was born into the opposite. So why was Jesus born into poverty? Why was the start to his life so difficult when as the Son of God, he had the choice? Well, if I was to sum up why I think Jesus came as he did, as a helpless baby, I would say it's to show you and me how much he thinks we're worth. He'd do anything for us. He would do anything, go through anything, even being born into human history as a tiny, helpless baby to show us that we are loved. We're going to listen to a song now. It's quite a simple, catchy tune, so do join in with the words on the screen. But if you sing or you don't sing, let's use this time to remember that the Christmas story is our story because Jesus was God's gift to all of us. The angels knew from long ago that God so loved the world and would not let it go. And prayers of saints across the years were crying out for a messiah to appear So let's now light our two Advent candles as we count down to Christmas. And let's say together our special Advent prayer. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Lord, let us use your shining light to help us help others. Amen. It's been great to see you again, Christchurch. 
I uh, hope you're really enjoying learning your songs and your narration for our special family Christmas celebration on Christmas Eve. Don't forget to tell all your family to tune in on Christmas Eve at four o'clock because you guys are the stars of the show. Next week is our last assembly of the term. So it's going to be a Christmas special. We're going to do some games. So we're really looking forward to that next week. Let's finish this act of worship with our school prayer. Let's say this together. Dear God, help us to make good decisions, to be the best learners we can be. Give us plenty of opportunities and let us cherish them. Help us to be kind, sharing and loving and to treat everyone equally. Help us to care for the wonderful environment we live in, as well as others and ourselves, while giving us the power to conquer life's challenges. Help us to be grateful and not greedy. Thank you for all the happiness and joy you bring us. Amen. Amen. So see you next week for lots of fun and games. Bye.